Manchester City have completed the return of Ilkay Gundogan, the return of the kink. It's actually happened. Gundogan is a City player again, and I'm very, very, very excited. It's always wonderful to see your legends back in a blue shirt or back in this beautiful away kit. I cannot wait to see him in it. Um, and we've got our man back. I wouldn't been called crazy if I suggested this a month ago, but Gundogan is finally back where he belongs. He's come back to the Etihad Stadium. He's binned off sunny Barcelona and come back to rainy Manchester because he couldn't resist it here. The lure of Pep Guardiola uh, and playing with Kevin De Bruyne and Erling Haaland and the rest of the brilliant players has been too much. And honestly, this is a wonderful day. So today, I'm going to run through everything you need to know about Gundogan's return. Of course, you know a lot about him as a player, so I don't need to tell you what he is. I don't need to tell you about his mentality, his goal score ability, his brilliant technical ability, his genius level of game understanding and all that kind of stuff. You know that that's already there. But I will tell you about his time at Barcelona and if he can still fit into this squad and where um, where he'll play, what he'll allow Guardiola to do um, and potentially some concerns, you know, um, and what it means for Manchester City going forward. I will tell you all that today. But first, please give the video a like. It's absolutely worth it for Ilkay's return. Give the video a like. And if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Um, a lifelong Manchester City fun um and hopefully you enjoy the content i think it's pretty good uh, i'm biased of course i make it but give the video a like subscribe and get in the comments and let me know here's a prediction for you in the comments how many goals and assists is gundogan getting uh this season maybe at this weekend against ipswich let me know down below in the comments so today we're going to start um by just looking at the transfer and how it came about now the overview of this is that essentially he's leaving uh, barcelona after a one-year loan from manchester city no i'm kidding he went on a free transfer of course he left manchester city in disappointing circumstances the captain of a treble winning side and it felt at the time that he left maybe a bit too early he did win the treble he did captain the side but you could tell he maybe wanted to stay and he wasn't offered a two-year contract it's come out since then that that was the issue that he was offered a one-year deal which at the time was the policy for Manchester City to give players of a certain age only a one-year extension but City realized in hindsight that that was a mistake of course they changed that tack for Kyle Walker but the point is at that point the damage was already done he'd already agreed with uh, Barcelona he gave them their word and he trotted off to the camp now and spent a year at Barcelona. It did not go well there. On the pitch, it did. He was really good. But Barcelona, no money, absolute broke, essentially shipped him off, uh, made his life a little bit uncomfortable because they wanted to sign Dani Olmo, a younger player. Gundogan, absolutely confused, uh, mistreated, misunderstood, decided... Uh, to talk to Barcelona and say, can I come back on a free transfer to Manchester? And they go for it, mate. He ran Guardiola, got back, and now he's a Manchester City player again. He's a blue. It's wild to me as a City fan that Gundogan chose to leave Barcelona to come back to Manchester. You know, Barcelona are absolutely gigantic institution. And to me, we're still little Manchester City. You know, they'll always be that because that's who they were when I grew up. I'm aware on a, a super massive club these days. But it is crazy when you really think about it that Guardiola chose to leave Barcelona after a year. A, a wonderful city. A, an astonishingly big club. One of the greatest clubs of all time. And he wanted to come back home to Manchester because Manchester City is the place to be. It's the pinnacle of football right now in terms of quality, Madrid aside maybe, but it is the pinnacle, the league's best league in the world. And to be honest, they treat players like human beings. So that's why he's back. And let's be honest, Manchester City needed this as well. We needed a player of, of his quality and experience. And Guardiola was absolutely not going to turn down a chance to sign him. And I personally love it. I love the narrative of this. I love the emotional return. Because football to me is all about those moments. It's all about those stories we tell people. And I've got a feeling Gundogan's story isn't complete. I don't think it is. This guy has a sense of a big occasion. And I do feel he's going to come back and write new chapters in this Manchester City book of his. And I can't wait to see it happen. Because I feel like a player of his quality... They don't go quietly into the night. They make a statement because that is what Ilkay Gundogan does. He doesn't know how to uh, burn out gently. He's a brilliant player who will always impact any team he's involved in. And I could not wait. And I'll, I'll talk about that more later on. But let's talk about his time at Barcelona because a lot of you people will be wondering... Um, was he a success there? Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. He absolutely was a success at Barcelona. Um, he played 36 La Liga games for him. Got five goals, nine assists. 
So that was uh, 14 goal contributions um, in La Liga. You got a, a further four assists in the Champions League and one in the Supercopa as well. So in the end, he had 19 goals and assists for, for Barcelona. And when you look at his stats, which will be on screen right now, um, compared to his rest of his teammates, so this is his teammates in La Liga. He was the number one for assists, the number one for key, pa key passes, the number one for final third passes, the number one for shots created, uh, the number one for the positive effect on expected goals, number one for distance run, so he ran more than anyone, number one for recoveries, second in the most passes, number one for carries into the final third, number three for uh, interceptions, and number three for dribbles completed. That is a remarkable bunch of stats for a guy who's 33 years old in his debut season in La Liga. This guy was their best player last season. He absolutely was. Sane Barcelona fans have admitted that, uh, and they're disappointed that Barcelona have kicked him out of the club, essentially. Uh, a remarkable set of stats for a man of his age in his debut season. Absolutely brilliant. And when you look at it, like, he's ran more than anyone else in Barcelona's side last season. More recoveries, uh, the third most interceptions, the third most dribbles completed. That is brilliant. And when you look where he played as well last season, um, he played a central, central midfielder, but he also played 13 games as a DM as well for them. Uh, so he's got a lot of experience there. But Barcelona, man, they've absolutely dropped the ball on this. Gundogan is a brilliant player and their best player last season. So don't, don't get this confused. Gundogan is not returning here. Uh, as as a player sort of washed, who's who's grown a little bit older and maybe a little bit slower and more jaded, he's returning very much as an elite footballer. You've only got to look at his performances for Germany in the Euros to know that that genius is still very much a genius. His brain is quicker, uh, his feet do wonderful things. Uh, an absolute brilliant player and a leader and a, a man mountain of a character. And I cannot wait to see him back in this Manchester City side. And it does make you think, where will he play in this City side? Uh, City have changed a lot they absolutely have changed a lot you know um under Guardiola of the past year you know of course he won the league but the style did change a tiny bit we had more runners and I think it's time to come back to those players in the pockets Guardiola talked a lot about um needing players in the pockets in pre-season it's why he was playing McAtee and we'll get to McAtee later on by the way when we talk about other uh views on this but he talked about needing that. And I felt we needed that for a while as well. We had Nunes, who was a runner. Kovacic, who's good technically, but more of a runner too. And I do f feel like last season, we had the likes of Akanji and Alvarez uh, hovering around the area. And they're not creating plays anywhere near to the same extent that Ilkay Gundogan is. Gundogan is a genius. The kind of guy that um, links up with your wingers so well. who play through balls to Haaland. And he was one of the more creative users of Erling Haaland's ability last uh, in his last season before he resigned. He was absolutely brilliant, Haaland, um, running onto uh, Ilkay Gundogan's through balls. And I think this is where he's going to be really, really useful. Like, genuinely, the quality that he's got... Uh, in terms of positional sense and understanding, is going to be great. He, of course, brings an awful lot of game intelligence, but he bring, brings versatility. There'll be some graphics on screen right now showing how he could line up. You can immediately imagine uh, a scenario where Rodri is sat alongside Gundogan, the two of them there behind KDB or Foden, and that is experience, it's guile, it's intelligence, it's a goal threat. Obviously, Rodri has got this new found goal threat where... He's so good uh, at getting forward and scoring goals in the absence of Gundogan that he's learned another uh, another tool. And you've got Gundogan who can do that too. So I can imagine a scenario when they're both just taking turns to go forward uh, to support Foden or KDB ahead of them. And it's beautiful. But then imagine a scenario where Rodri needs a rest. So you put Gundo there as a deep, uh, deeper player. And then you put either Kovacic alongside him for the legs, for the ball carrying, for the intelligence as well. Or you put Bernardo Silva alongside uh, Gundogan for that experience and energy. Or you can imagine a sort of scenario where you've got Gundogan um, alongside KDB and Foden with Rodri just deeper again, playing as an eight. It, there's so many possible variations. And we look at our midfield six options now, the, the starters essentially. You've got Rodri, Gundogan, Kovacic, Bernardo, Foden, and De Bruyne. That is so, so good. And even if we have to play a false nine again, um, if we don't sign the backup striker that we're allegedly interested in, you can imagine a scenario where Gundogan, who's so used to that role, occasionally goes there, and rotates with Foden, rotates with De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva. He has... The intelligence to do that. And I've, I've been concerned about the idea of a false nine without Alvarez because I didn't feel like we had the smart players to do it. I wasn't convinced we did. I feel like it was a little bit different to many years ago when we had Gundogan at his peak, 
Bernardo at his peak, Mara's at their peak. It felt like a lot more controlled and measured as a false nine system. But with Gundogan back, absolutely we've got it. We've absolutely got it. And I can imagine Gundogan loving alternating with Foden and De Bruyne and Bernardo and linking up with Doku and Savinho and Oscar Bob and Erling Haaland. And I can absolutely see a situation where his squad role is going to be fluid. He won't play every game. But City, you've got so many games to play. He will rotate more and he'll allow the likes of uh, De Bruyne, Rodri, rest if they need it. And honestly, we're going to need that. With the Club World Cup coming up and the amount of games that City can play being as close to 70... We're going to need Ilkay Gundogan. Essentially, our squad is better for him. Now, I'm not going to pretend it's all roses. You know, there are potential concerns. He is 33 years old. He does turn 34 uh, pretty soon. I think it's October he turns 34. And he does potentially mean downsides for James McAtee, Nico O'Reilly, maybe Nunes. Look, I feel sorry for Nunes. Uh, my views on Nunes have been quite open and honest. I do feel, unfortunately... I do feel like uh, his time is up at Manchester City. I don't feel it's really worked. If he wants to stay, uh, stay and he wants to prove himself, absolutely, please do that, Mateus Nunes. But I feel like it's an experiment. That's not really worked for Manchester City or him, unfortunately. He's not the level of genius that's required to be a regular start for Man City currently. He could stay around, but he's not going to play. So... On the Nunes front, I think it's a, another failure as a signing, and we've just corrected it with Gundogan. Um, and that's what it is for now. And you can't deny that it is a short-term signing. Look, ultimately, you look at our midfield, Kovacic is 30, Bernardo's 30, Gundogan will be 34 by the end of the season, De Bruyne's 33, 34. We are going to need investment soon in that midfield position. Even Rodri's 28 now. So it's not like we are staring down a whole bunch of um, young players in that role. And this does kick the can further down the road. The argument now is that, of course, it gives us a year to maybe look at the long-term replacements. And it can't be backups. It has to be first-team level starting quality. You're talking about Adam Wharton. You're talking about Bruno Gramares. Someone of that ilk, maybe a Florian Verts or Jamal Musiala. That's the level that we have to aim for. And Gundogan returning on a free saves so much money. It gives us time. It gives us a year to really get our, our, our things in order and find the right replacement. So... I understand the concerns, but you can see why it's not that big a deal. But still, we have kicked the can down the road. And he is older, and there's no guarantee as well either. If we're being totally honest, there's no guarantee he'll immediately get up to scratch with the pace of the Premier League. He probably will, but there's no guarantee. What does it mean for McAtee as well? Look, McAtee will probably get less game time. There's no two ways about it. Uh, he's got six starting midfielders there that he really trusts. You could argue, and I think I would argue that still... It's one of those things where McAtee probably wouldn't have been starting much anyway. I feel like McAtee's in Oscar Bob's role from last season where he'll get the Carabao Cup games. Maybe he'll get a game if City have already qualified for the Champions League. Uh, maybe he'll get the odd game out wide if, you know, to get a little bit of minutes. Or maybe he'll just be the guy who comes off with a 4-0 up or 3-0 up with 25 minutes to go. And to be honest... The chances of that happening is probably higher now Gundogan's back at City. I really do believe we're that much better with Gundogan. So I think it depends on what the expectations were. I didn't really feel he was going to get a lot of games this season anyway. I was hoping for around 5 to 10 starts and 10 to 15 substitution appearances for McAtee. I feel that's still possible. I think it is. And we can't deny as well that there's going to be injuries. So as much as the concerns about game time, there will be. It's tough for O'Reilly. He's definitely dropped down. But if he, if he stays around with the first team and trains, it could be enough for him to improve anyway. Other concerns, well, it is more money wasted on Nunes and Calvin Phillips. You can't deny that. And it does make you wonder why we're so reluctant to splash the cash for this season. It isn't great. It isn't great on that front. You, you you do wonder if there's more going on that we realise, you know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, there could be a scenario where they are waiting to see the result of the 115 charges. Who knows? It could be that we're saving money because the market isn't quite right. It could be that they're not sure how much they want to spend in a world where they don't know if Guardiola is going to be here or not. I don't know. It's complicated. And it doesn't imply... It's not reassuring. And the other concern is that it feels like we've sort of got out of jail a little bit there. It feels like we were sleepwalking into a situation where we're going to have no backup for Rodri. And I know Kovacic and Bernardo were looking good in that one game against Chelsea. But it felt like we sort of landed on our feet a little bit there. And it doesn't look too great on the board that they've sort of got away with it a little bit. Another concern you could say is that is actually Kovacic has just got man of the match as well against Chelsea. Uh, he was wonderful in that role. And is, is it a shame to lose, you know... Um, 
lose a little bit of faith in him potentially, not him not get as much game time as he deserves. I don't know. I don't know. That's all very negative, but I wanted to be very balanced about it. But overall, I can't deny that I'm a really, really, really positive fan of this movie. I feel like it's romantic, but also sensible. If you were to try and build the perfect midfield that Manchester City need right now, you would essentially craft Ilkay Gundogan. You need someone with immediate experience in the Premier League, someone that knows Pep Guardiola inside out, someone that knows pretty much all the squad inside out, someone that's a, that's a leader, that's a captain. Someone that uh, will understand his role in the squad perfectly. Someone that can play as a six, an eight, as a ten, as a false nine. Someone that will mentor young players. Someone that will cost us absolutely nothing. Like It's like you've designed the perfect player for Manchester City right now in Ilkay Gundogan. We know he is. So he comes back with... Um, not the most absurd expectations, but we know he's going to be really good still. I do think he gives us more of a chance to win trophies. I think we're more likely to win the Champions League again with Gundogan. I really believe it's that that much of a, a change for Manchester City in terms of the, the expectations this season. Gundogan is that much of a genius that I think everything changes for us. And I can't deny it. Look, for me, I watch football because I love football. But I also love football because of the stories and the narratives. When you get a player like Ilkay Gundogan, who has that injury when he joins us and he develops over years and he becomes better and better and he becomes the genius that we saw when he left and he gives us moments like Aston Villa, he gives us moments like uh, a brace against Man United in the FA Cup final on the way to a treble. He captains us to a treble. He scores loads of goals in a season where... Aguero is out, we have the false nine, he steps up and essentially drives us to a title. Uh, he plays as a defensive midfielder when we win 14 games in a row to pip Liverpool to the title when Fernandinho's out injured. When you see what he's done and he's wrote, written all these wonderful stories and scored so many beautiful goals and led with such elegance and composure. Look, to me, I love it. I love the fact that he's decided to come home because it's the place he wants to be. When you get a legend of the game, one of the all-time greats who wants desperately to come back, I love it. It's exciting. Why deny yourself to... I get goosebumps actually thinking about it. Why deny yourself to a chance to relive that magic again? Because I just know he's going to score. Um, he probably will be involved at Ivers, which will probably score. I don't know. As I'm recording this video, I'm not sure if that'll happen. But would anyone be surprised? Gundogan writes these stories. And when he comes off the bench and gets his first assist or goal, when he starts and he's wonderful and the crowd get behind him and you see him in this new kit and the, the home kit and the away kit and we fall in love with him again, that beautiful man. I tell you what, it's going to hit big time, like crack. I cannot wait to watch Gundogan back in a Manchester City shirt. He's going to get a hero's welcome. And if he doesn't, didn't already deserve a statue, I've got a feeling by the end of this spell, he's going to cement it because Gundogan is a legend and he's coming back as a legend probably with something to prove because his story ended too abruptly in his personal opinion and he made a mistake leaving Manchester City and he knows it deep down. And it could be Guardiola's first ever signing and last ever signing at Man City. That is a beautiful narrative, isn't it? I don't know if that'll be the case because we could sign someone, Guardiola could extend. But what I do know is I love this transfer. It's romantic, it's perfect, it's beautiful. If you can get nostalgia and common sense at the same time, you're winning. And I'll absolutely love it. Guys, the king has returned. Gundogan is a Manchester City player. He made the Scousers cry. He made United cry. And he's back home at the Etihad. And he loves this club. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like. Subscribe. Let me know in the comments your wonderful look at Gundogan predictions for this season. <sighs> Thank you very much.